Hi there, welcome back. Welcome to video number three of the SK2B series, Brown SK2B. And the time between the last video and this one has been spent cleaning and cleaning and cleaning some more. I've now got this thing nice and shiny. This thing was a real, real mess. It had, something had fallen in here. Something had leaked on here and it caused um, a pileup of dirt and grime on something which was sort of sticky. It wasn't nicotine, it was something else, but this whole area here was completely flooded in it. And uh, it was quite a job to get it out, I can tell you. But I did, with a hell of a lot of uh, elbow grease, a lot of alcohol, I tried alcohol first. It didn't really do the job properly. I then went on to um, acetone. And ultimately, the only thing that managed to get all the stuff out was brake cleaner, believe it or not. Brake cleaner. Very abrasive stuff, but it evaporates very quickly. And as long as you use it very sparingly on the tip of a, a Q-tip, which is what I did, I would uh, simply, you know, take a Q-tip and I would spray just on the edge there. And then I would just simply start going along and throw the Q-tips away. I used a lot of Q-tips, a lot of Q-tips. But the result is fabulous. All the grime came out and I started in one corner. That's what you do. You do it, you know, a couple of centimeters at a time. Just start in a corner and just keep going through. And ultimately, this is what you're left with. And it really is a pleasure to see it like this. It looks great, really great. Everything is in perfect condition. Nothing was broken here. So um, when you see it clean, it's just a completely different radio. And some of the spots you've got to get to from the front. I removed this uh, dial lamp and you get in underneath there. And then you go around the edges and you go around the top. Anyway, as I said, one step at a time. And I finally got this thing cleaned up which now leaves us with the next stage. And the next stage on this guy is going to be the alignment of the IF. I'll be doing the AM IF alignment and the uh, FM IF alignment. And then I'll probably see, I've been looking at the uh, service manual and I'm not sure about the dial accuracy adjustment. In other words, the oscillator and front end adjustment. I think it's actually in here, but one step at a time. First of all, the IFs. And it's actually quite clear, if you look at the service manual, that the inner ones, in other words, those two, and the corresponding two underneath, are for the AM IF alignments. And then those two, and the corresponding two underneath, are for the FM. So, in the first stage of this alignment, we'll be doing dealing just with one, two, and the underside one, three, the underside one, four. I've actually removed the uh, speaker connection here to the speaker because I want to be able to measure this without hearing the noise. If you know how to do the alignments, and I'll describe it as I go along, it does get irritating hearing the tone all the time. Now, one thing I noticed here is this thing is slightly different to what we're used to. If we measure the uh, two points coming out of the transformer, in other words, the secondary, we get 1.2 ohms. It's about right. That is the DC resistance of the secondary of the transformer. The speaker itself is 3.8, 4 volt, 4 ohms. Normal, no problem. But now watch this. If I take this one, which is one of the secondaries, and I touch the chassis, I'm actually getting infinite resistance. And if I measure that one, I'm also getting infinite resistance. In other words, the secondary of the transformer, it goes straight to the speaker and it's actually floating. There is no ground connection on the speaker. This is very unusual. I've seen that on the schematic. I checked on the schematic because I thought there was a mistake here somewhere. Very unusual to have a completely floating secondary on the speaker. And it makes sense. No reason why you need to connect it to ground. But um, it just caught me out a little bit here because I wasn't expecting it. 
But anyway, what I'll do is I'll connect the uh, AC voltmeter to there and to there, in other words, across the secondary. And I don't really need to connect it to the speaker because I'll be using very low levels and um, you don't really need to have a speaker across it if you don't blast this with any kind of volume. We don't want to go into high volumes anyway. If you look at, um, I think it was the last Mr. Carlson's lab video, he, um, I had the idea that this was true, but it took uh, hearing it from him to give me the courage to do so. You can test a secondary um, without it being connected to a load, provided you don't have high levels of uh, audio output. So that makes it easier to measure on, uh, on a voltmeter, an AC voltmeter. So that's where we'll be measuring. Now, what are we trying to do? We are going to feed a 460 kilohertz carrier here with a modulated tone on it. And 460, because that is the IF frequency for this radio, it's not 455 like my American friends are quite used to. This works on 460. So a signal comes into the grid of this tube. This is an EF89. And um, it's going to be a carrier signal at 460 kilohertz, which is the IF frequency with a tone on it. And then we've got to help this tone get through, or this carrier with a tone gets get through the IF stages. And the first two sluice gates it finds is this one and the one below that. You align that to 460 so that the 460 is the center frequency of that filter and it allows the signal to go through unimpeded. Everything else above and below that gets attenuated. It then gets amplified by this guy, which is another EF89. And then you push it through that one and the one below. That's another two sluice gates, if you want to look at it that way. Also set to 460 and you tune it to 460. Then it gets to here and this is where it starts getting demodulated and you start getting audio out of it. So you're trying to open the path, make a path through from here to there for a signal at 460 kilohertz. That is the result of your mixing over here between the front end tuning and your oscillator. Anyway, that's a different subject. If you want to see how the uh, IF frequency is produced, I think you do a bit of research. It's fascinating stuff. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to align that one and that one and the two underneath. And uh, we'll be watching the AC voltmeter as it measures the tone amplitude that comes out, what would come out of the speaker. It's just not going to be heard because we've got the speaker disconnected. So let me set that up and we'll, um, we'll start tweaking. What we have here is 460 kilohertz. The amplitude is as low as this thing will go. In fact, I think it can go slightly lower, 0.7 millivolts RMS. Coming out of here, it's got modulation on. It's AM modulation, depth of 30% with a 400 hertz tone on there. So that's what we're on. That's what we're feeding out of here. Coming out of this channel of the signal generator. It comes into here. This is my stepped attenuator. It comes into there. The uh, attenuation at the moment is 3, 6, 12. So 18 dB attenuation. The antenna simulator is off and it comes out here. The reason for this is that this signal, although it's very small, is still far too high. And uh, we want a very, very small signal, as small as we can make it going into that uh, tube into the front of that uh, radio so that we don't activate the uh, automatic gain control circuit and start messing up the uh, bias of the tubes. You want it small enough that you can hear it or measure it and um, get this as finely aligned as possible. So I've actually put it up and found that 18 dB is about right, but I'll show you the result when I set this up. So the first one I'm going to tweak is that one there. Then I'll probably go on to that one, and then on the underside I'll do those two as well. And I'm just going to show you the uh, results on the voltmeter. Now the one thing to bear in mind is these things can be quite stiff, so I've put in a little bit of uh, WD-40 just to make sure that um, they move. I know from, from experience that they're quite stiff, and if you're not careful you'll break the, uh, the cores. 
So here we are, we've got a reading. This is on 0.3 volts AC. I can adjust it by increasing or decreasing the volume. I'm going to leave it at about the center and I'm going to start on that core. Now just to show you that we are getting a tone, I'm going to touch that floating wire on these from the secondary, which is connected to the uh, AC voltmeter, to the speaker. See that? We can hear it, but we don't want to. So let me start at this end. By the way, I'm using these ceramic twiddle sticks, screwdriver thing, so we don't break anything. Oh, we're getting a bit there. Oh, we're getting quite a bit. There's my peak. Right, I'm going to go to the other one. Nope, wrong way. There's my peak. See, simple as that. Those two top ones have been done. Now I'm just going to carefully flip this thing on its back so I can get to the underside. Try not to get shocked in the meantime. I'll lower the volume a little bit so we can get back to the center there. Okay. And now I'm going to tweak the bottom ones. Where are they? Don't think it's in yet, she said. Nope, wrong way. There we go, that one's done. Let's look at the other one. Okay. No. There's my peak. And our AM has been aligned. Simple as that. Brilliant. Okay. Let me just uh, rewire the speaker and see if we notice any difference. I've got the mini whip connected. Let's see how we go. Almer fue el primero en notificar este hallazgo, una tierra nueva que no Así que no sería de extrañar que otros hombres hubieran visto Douglas Engelbart y este podría ser su hermano mayor. Madera con dos ruedas. Hola, que le comunica con el ordenador. El primer ratón no se comercializó hasta 1900. Bloody brilliant. A lot of Canary Island stuff, some North Africa coming through, maybe something else. I just don't understand some of the languages. Um, but um, this thing's picking up nicely, and that's with the mini whip as usual. So, nothing too dramatic, nothing too unusual. We're quite uh, accustomed to getting this on in medium wave at night with that mini whip uh, connected. This is our Madeiran station, the one and only Madeiran station on AM. If I've got one observation to make with this broken dial, this is pretty sensitive. There's no gearing on this, so you literally have, I mean, you do have some diameter here, which uh, dampens the uh, 
the effect of the turn, in other words, the gearing to the uh, tuning condenser, but it's pretty sensitive. And it's not as easy to tune as some of the other ones that have the, you know, the dial cords going through multiple pulleys and gearing it all down. You know, you literally have one turn. This thing's over here. When you turn it over, it's over there and the capacitor has been fully meshed. All right, so that's it. One turn. And that does make for some challenging uh, fine tuning, if that's what you want to do. The idea is you should have, you know, tuned to the stations that... Uh, that are quite strong in your area, so that doesn't become an issue. But um, yeah, this is it. One turn, half turn actually. It's literally half a turn from there to there. Okay? You've got to be uh, a fine tuner. Right, next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to... I can't test the dial accuracy just yet. I'll have to put this thing in the cabinet, or rather I have to get the, uh, the backing plate for this. Yeah, I've got to put it in the cabinet, really, um, to check where the dial's going to go. Hmm. I'll probably be able to figure something out. But what I'm going to do is set it up for the FM alignment, which is slightly different. The same, but different. Let's set this up for the FMIF alignment. So first of all, 10.7 megahertz. Amplitude will make it pretty small. I'm going to prepare it for some um, FM modulation just so that when we're ready for it, and I'll show you why, we'll be there. 600 hertz tone. So I've got um, a 10.7 megahertz carrier with a 600 hertz tone modulating it, and I can activate that there or deactivate it. I'll put it on. It again comes through the stepped attenuator, but in this case I don't think I'll need much attenuation. We will see how much we need when we get to it. And this is where things change somewhat. This is the ECC85, the FM front end tube. This thing has got a shield on it and there's a braid that is soldered to ground. Now the first thing you need to do is desolder that braid so this shield is sort of floating, not touching ground. And you take your signal and you connect that to the shield and that to the ground. Now what we're doing is we're going to be coupling the signal through the shield into the tube. It's sort of called light coupling, which is why the uh, signal amplitude might need to be a bit higher than it is on, uh, on the AM alignment. But that's where we feed in the signal. And we're going to be measuring the voltage across that capacitor. Now the way to do that is take this negative and connect it to the chassis because if you recall that capacitor, that electrolytic is across the, uh, it's connected to chassis ground and then the other point comes to here. So we're measuring the DC voltage across that capacitor and what we're going to be measuring is a negative DC volt voltage which um, will increase depending on how strong or how clear our signal is coming through. So now we need to um, check the voltmeter. We're going to be putting it on DC volts. It's going to be reverse polarity, so it's measuring minus DC volts. And we're going to be adjusting... Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Here's one down there, that one there, the one there. So the outside ones closest to the back both below and above. The ones we're going to be adjusting are this one here and the one below, this one here and the one below. Now, for maximum amplitude across that capacitor, we measure this one and the one below. In other words, the first IF. And we measure this one, but only the one below, which is um, the second IF, but the primary. The secondary, we need to do something different to it. So let me set it up and show you the voltmeter. Now the first thing I've done is I've put the modulation on in the uh, signal generator so we can hear it. We're basically hearing a um, 600 hertz tone FM modulated coming through at the carrier frequency. Now what I need to do is I'm going to turn off the modulation the, um, I had to increase the uh, 
signal generator amplitude to about 2 millivolts and that gives us about, what is that, that's on 1 volts, about 0.7 volts RMS, 0.7 volts DC and it's negative DC because this is a negative voltage. Now I'm going to start with these guys and see how we get along. The only one I don't want to touch is that one there, okay? Not much change there. Nothing there actually. Let's try the bottom one. This thing's not reaching. Damn. It's not reaching. Let me try my wooden one. Well, so much for planning to do a quick FM alignment. Had a problem, a real problem, a real problem. I started uh, trying to loosen this uh, core and I found it was very, very far inside there. Now remember, we were getting FM, right? So I kept going in and going in and going in and before I knew it, I was going straight through. I looked on the underside, same story, this thing had no cores. Neither this one nor the under one had a core at all. So I uh, pulled this off, disconnected. It's only five wires on the underside. It's actually fairly easy. It's those three over there. That's the AM side and these two over here. That's the FM. You just uh, desolder them, remove these two screws and the whole thing comes out the top. And when I did that, I found this thing had the cores, which had been in there, were completely powdered up. Now, I did have some spare cores, these ones, but they're too big. This thing uses, I don't know, probably 3 millimeter, 4 millimeter. I'm not sure what the uh, actual diameter of the cores are, but they're very, very small. And uh, it looks like someone had tried to tamper with it, probably with the screwdriver like this one. And it broke and they just went on and on and on. And in fact, both sides had been tampered with. Both sides were completely shattered. In fact, when it came out, it came out in just powder. And the way I got that powder out, because in the meantime, because I put in the uh, WD-40, of course, it had all become mushy and turned into a paste. So I ended up going in with a drill bit very slowly and it sort of draws it out. Otherwise it just sort of clogs in there. I managed to clear that channel and uh, then I had the problem of finding cores to put in here. Now, what did I do? Well, I sacrificed these two. This is the AM section. Both cores are fine. I had uh, aligned the AM. And I decided I was going to sacrifice the AM for now because I can always correct it later. And I put the cores in and now I'm going to try the adjustment again. Now what I find quite strange is that we actually did receive FM. It was weak, it was really bad, but it was there. It wasn't completely dead. So let's see if we can align this thing. I've uh, set everything up again. I've got the uh, AC voltmeter across that uh, discriminator cap. There it is there. The ground or the negative is uh, connected to the chassis. I've got the signal generator sending the signal to that shield of the ECC85 and to ground. Remember, I desoldered that braid and we're going to try again. Let me put on the radio. 
I've got a modulated signal on there because I don't know just how far off this thing is now. So I've put a modulated signal just to make sure we've got something. Still warming up. Volumes on max. And I'll put on... First of all, I'm going to tune off from the station. And I'll put on the signal generator. Yep. Loud and clear. Take off the modulation. And we've got our 10.7 megahertz signal coming in there. And let me try again. That one's peaked. Let me try the underside. Okay. Okay, that's understandable. I'm going to reduce the uh, amplitude on the signal generator. It's understandable because I had no way to know how far in it, it went. Oui. Still too strong. Okay. Oh, we reached a peak there. There's our peak. Let me see if the top side makes any difference now. Just a little bit. Okay, we've picked that guy. Let's go to the bottom one. Oh, that's about right. We've picked IFM. And there's two more actually. The other two that tell you to peak are these two here. And these are actually the first ones inside the FM can. And I think we can get to them quite easily, so let's try. Putting on the other camera. Okay. Get rid of some of this wax. This one actually uses a slightly bigger driver. Oh, that's nice. We've got a nice one there. And this one. Going down. Okay, decrease the amplitude a bit more. I think we're still getting a bit of AGC action on here, so I'm going to send the signal generator through the um, stepped attenuator just to give it a smaller signal. 
think maybe it was just a little bit too strong still. So it's that 12 dB. Let's see what happens now. Something strange is happening here. Things going all over the place. It's tuned into something there. That's why. Now it's too sensitive. <laughs> okay. That seems to be a peak. I think we've got it. And for those paying attention at home, we have one more to do. The reason I say that is that I nearly forgot. And I'm supposed to be paying attention. I nearly forgot the last alignment. Uh, I actually finished the two down here and said, yeah, it's done. No, it's not done. We have the last one to do. And the last one is the secondary of the second IF coil or the second IF transformer. And what this does is it actually adjusts the positioning or the slope of the uh, ratio detector. I think this one uses. I keep getting mixed up. I wasn't paying attention during that lecture. Not that I had one. I went to university after the tube era. But anyway, you adjust that and the idea is you're supposed to put in a, uh, a microammeter, get a two resistors in series and that's one way of doing it. There are other ways of doing it. I'm going to show you the one I prefer. This thing is what really adjusts where the FM signal is detected and it adjusts it in such a way that you get the least distortion. And you can go into all sorts of measurement techniques. The one I prefer is just to feed an FM signal in here. I've got my uh, carrier over here, 10.7 megahertz. We've aligned the sluice gates all the way through. We know those are as sensitive as they can be, or as accurate as we can make them. And now I'm going to feed, on that 10.7 megahertz carrier, I'm going to feed a, an audio tone, which is modulated on it. And the signal generator does that. So. FM modulated, one kilohertz, and we can hear it, right? I chose one kilohertz just for a change. Let me show you what it looks like. And there it is. Very low. I've got it going into the dummy load. I've uh, disconnected the speaker and connected that to the dummy load. So I can put it on dummy load. We don't have to listen to it. Should probably make it four ohms. I think that's more like four ohms. And now I can increase the volume without having to hear the bloody thing. So we've got ourselves a very, very nice sine wave, as you can see. And that tells me one thing. It tells me that this thing is actually perfectly adjusted because I'm going to twiddle the uh, stick. Don't you like the technical terms? Twiddle the stick. I'm going to adjust it there and we'll see what the signal looks like on the scope. Here we go. I'm going to twiddle the stick. Now, as you can see there, that sine wave, not only is it becoming smaller, but it's actually bending off to the left there. 
If I go the other way, you see a similar effect. The sine wave becomes less clean. That is where I consider it to be perfect. And I think our uh, IF alignment, including the discriminator or ratio detector, is done. Brilliant. Brilliant. All I need to do now is remove everything here. I've got to solder that shield back onto this braid. Oi, that's hot. That tube is hot. Makes sense. Oi, that is hot. I let it cool down a bit. And I've also got to solder this back, the uh, speaker connector back to there. And uh, we'll be able to test it. Just one more thing for those paying particular attention at home. Again, I wasn't, I nearly forgot. This here, this is a capacitor, and this capacitor is actually connected between the mains in, one of the mains lines, and the antenna, the FM dipole antenna. Now, what this does, it's, um, it's on the schematic, it's a 20 picofarad capacitor, and what it does is it actually couples the um, line, the mains line, as a source of, uh, of antenna signal. So even if you don't have an antenna on here, which we don't, we don't have an FM antenna built into the radio, it actually uses one of the mains lines, probably the live, as your antenna. And it's 20 picofarads, so it's very, very small, so you can, in fact, touch that. But it's a capacitor, and if that thing shorted, if that thing blew up and, or shorted, that would make that point there probably live, or neutral, if you're lucky. I can't find a 20 picofarad safety cap. Now, safety cap, or the X or the Y caps, and when they go faulty, they open. They go faulty open circuit, which means you'd lose your antenna signal coming from the mains, but you wouldn't get shocked. However, I don't have that. So what I've put in here is I've put in two Murata 47 picofarad capacitors. They're 1000 volts rated, very good caps. And the two of them are in series, so I get about 23 picofarads. The idea is if one of them goes short, the other one will hold on and probably uh, not zap you. So that's my solution. And that, I think, is really all I'm going to do for this video, except test. All right. Our radio's on. Volume up. It's on FM. Parlamento, o Ministro dos Negócios Estrangeiros, Augusto Santos Silva. Quando chegam as vacinas a Portugal, imediatamente depois de This is Canary Islands on FM in the evening. Picking up in Madeira. Canary Islands again. That's fabulous. This is something Spanish, probably Canary Islands as well. Yes, para o patamar mínimo, que significa que as restrições aí vão ser mais leves, digamos assim. Avança polaca, neste caso a polonese. Fantastic. Há quem diga que esta peça é um. So, I've got a problem. I've solved one problem, I've got another problem. I've got to find some cause for that, and uh, I need some help. I don't know where to get them. If anybody can uh, just point me in the right direction, I'll order some. I need to get the AM working. The AM, I took from the AM to put in the FM, because FM to me is the main priority on these radios. I do use them regularly, so um, I definitely want AM to be picking up well. 
I want AM to work as well, obviously, because that's what you do when you restore a radio. You don't give it one leg. But um, I need to find some cores. And as I said, I've got quite a few that I took from some old radio. I don't even remember which one it was. Um, I always save these things and they are too big. They are just too big. So if you can help me, I'd appreciate it. And I'm going to take a break for now because this thing has been a real headache. I mean, the time I took to clear this thing and, and get it done, it's, it's unbelievable. I'm really tired of this for now. So I'm going to take a break for now and finish the video here. And then I've got, obviously, lots of stuff to do on the, uh, on the cabinet. I've got to fix the tone knob at the back. I think I know how I'm going to do that. I need to build this up. I found some acrylic, so I need to experiment a little bit and then show you how I did it. But for now, I need a break. So, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, please do so. Links are at the end of the video and in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. And guys, stay safe.